Welcome to episode four of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how Odin lost his eye to gain wisdom in the Norse myth of the Lord of the Gallows. The axis of the world was Yggdrasil. That ash soared and its branches fanned over gods and men and giants and dwarfs. It sheltered all creation. One root dug deep into Nivelheim, and under that root the spring of Ulgamer seethed and growled like water in a cauldron. Down there the dragon Needhog ripped apart corpses. Between mouthfuls he sent the squirrel Ratatosker whisking up the trunk from the deepest earth to heaven, and it carried insults to the eagle who sat on the topmost bough with a hawk perched on its brow. And Needhog was not content with corpses. He and his vile accomplices gnawed at the root of Yggdrasil, trying to loosen what was firm and put an end to the eternal. Other creatures, too, attacked and preyed off the living tree. Four stags nibbled at the new leaves, and goats tugged and tore off the tender shoots. Parts of the huge tree were peeling. Parts were soft and rotten. Yggdrasil whispered, and Yggdrasil groaned. A second root curled into Asgard. Under that root flowed the well of Erd, the spring of destiny where the gods gathered each day and held a court of justice. The three Norns lived nearby, fate and being and necessity. They shaped the life of each man from his first day to his last. And every day they sprinkled water on the branches of Yggdrasil and nourished the suffering tree. The third root burrowed into the part of Jotunheim by the frost giants. Under that root bubbled the spring guarded by the wise Mimur, and the water in that well gave insight to those who tasted it. The god Heimdall left his shrieking horn there until the day when he would need it to summon every living creature to Ragnarok, and Odin had given one eye for a single draught from it. He won immense knowledge there, and with it the thirst for yet greater wisdom. So the terrible one approached Yggdrasil alone. Odin said, I hung from that windswept tree, hung there for nine long nights. I was pierced with a spear. I was an offering to Odin, myself, to myself. No one has ever known or will ever know the roots of that ancient tree. No one come to comfort me with bread. No one revived me with a drink from a horn. I peered at the worlds below. I seized the runes, shrieking. I seized them. Then I fell back. From Bolthor's famous son, Besla's father, I learned nine powerful songs. I was able to drain the precious mead from the cauldron Odera. Then I began to thrive. My wisdom grew. I prospered and was fruitful. One word gained me many words. One deed gained me many deeds. The charms I know are not known by the wives of kings or by any man. The first is called help, because it can comfort grief and lessen pain and cure sickness. I know a second. Any man who hopes to become a healer needs to know it. I know a third. If I should sorely need help to hold back my enemy, I can blunt my opponent's blade and soften his staff so he cannot wound me. I know a fourth. If anyone should Bind me hand and foot. This charm is so great that the locks spring apart, releasing my limbs, and I can walk free. I know a fifth. If I should see a well-aimed arrow speeding to its mark, I can catch it, however fast it flies. I only have to fix it with my eye. I know a sixth. If anyone thinks to finish me by sending a sapling's root engraved with runes, that hero, full of spleen, will only destroy himself. I know a seventh. 
if I should see the hall roof burst into flames over the heads of my chosen comrades, I can quench the blaze however first it may be. I know the charm. I know, an, I know an eighth. All men would be well advised to learn it. If hatred takes root in men's minds, I can uproot it. I know a ninth. If I should need to save my ship in a storm, I can calm the wind that whips off wave crests and put the sea to sleep. I know a tenth. If ever I see witches flying on rafters, I can sing so that they go into a whirl and cannot change back into their day shapes or find their way to their own front doors. I know an eleventh. If I had to lead loyal, long-loved friends into a fight, I can sing behind my shield and they will go from strength to strength, unscathed to the battle, unscathed after the battle, unscathed they return home. I know a twelfth. If I see a hanged man swinging from a tree with his heels above my head, I can cut and color the runes so that he will come down and talk to me. I know a thirteenth. If I sprinkle water over a child, he will never fall in the thick of battle, nor falter and sink in sword play. Fourteenth, if I so desire, I can tell men the names of the gods and the elves one by one. Few fools can do this. I know a fifteenth. The dwarf, Thodorir, sang it in front of Delling's doors. A charm of power for the gods, glory for the elves, wisdom for Odin. I know a sixteenth. If I long for love play, I can turn the mind and win the heart of a white-armed woman. I know a seventeenth. Such a charm that a young girl will be loath to know an eighteenth. I will never tell it to a girl or married woman unless I am lying in her arms or she is my own sister. What you and you alone knows is always the most potent. And that is the last of the charms. These were the words of Odin before there were men. These were his words after his death when he rose again. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.